It's, yeah, the, the idea was it's, it's, it's the taste and the smell and the stimulus of information that you would get at the time in the place and your reaction to it or the character's reaction to it without uh, bringing in a whole lot of an agenda and how that stimulus provoked a response in the interior of this person's character. Mm. I was working the graveyard shift at a very fancy hotel in downtown Vancouver and uh, I was living these vampire hours so I'd get off in the morning and as I get off I'd see this distinguished gentleman coming in for his breakfast. And one day I uh, took the ferries up False Creek to, uh, there's a seafood restaurant there, and ran into this gentleman again who I recognized from the hotel. And the penny dropped, I realized who he was. And so uh, after uh, working out my courage for, let's say, six, seven months, decided that uh, I was going to put together the manuscript for the book and go and lay it down on the table in front of him. Uh, I went and the restaurant was completely empty. He was there having his business lunch with his glass of wine and his, his work spread around him. And I stood at the bar with a cup of coffee and looking over. Finally I said, Mr. McIntyre, I presume? And he went, yes. I said I had, I figured I'd use the Jack McClellan approach with him. He said, well, yeah, I used to work with Jack. So, uh, it's a Canadian book through and through. It's Montreal back in uh, the 20s. It's uh, a nasty tale of what's happening. It's about a, a guy and a gun and a girl and, and the whole uh, kit and caboodle. And he said, he ripped it open there in front of me and he took the book and he said, well, I'll give it to my people, but you got through the door. Jack is uh, your secret magical friend that you wish you'd have. He pops out with, out of nowhere with money and, and a plan and a girl and uh, the latest joke. And uh, he's the guy who, you know, sets the, the drums going. And uh, Nick is the guy who you are most of the time. That's it. Or the person you are, the guy who's thinking, who's waiting, who's watching. So in that sense, it's, it's, it's after. There are no flights of fancy in terms of the topography of the city. It's a, a sort of psychogeography of, Victoria, or of uh, Montreal in uh, the 1920s, in this particular point in time where you had this nexus of, of competing forces. It's from Flop House, it goes to uh, a gentleman's club. It goes from brothels to baseball diamonds. It goes uh, through uh, train stations and libraries. It's, you know, you could, you could walk the map of Montreal reading uh, The Man Who Killed. It's mostly true. That's basically what happened. Yeah.